that they send out, the nonprofits send out. So that's pretty cool too. That's awesome. Yeah, they're so cool. I'm going to have to uh, tweet. Uh, so the thing that I'm doing starting this year, which is something I should have done in 2020, um, but when uh, when the show finishes, I go on Facebook and I like post like who won and who we donated to, but then also I list your other organizations because uh, in the past I've gotten emails from people who have been like, oh, um, I want to donate to so-and-sos or uh, who didn't win because it sounded cool, you know? And so I wanted to make like an easy place for people to, to do that. So cool. um, so that's what I've been doing since, since this year started. Um, okay, I'm going to take us to Facebook. <laughs> And uh, maybe my dog will make an appearance tonight. <laughs> hey. Mine is here. You can see like a little bit. Oh, there's a pup in the back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> people, people can find turn. all the pups. <laughs> Buddies. all right <laughs> i also realized the other day because we've been doing so many themes that are uh, you know tv shows and movies i forgot that there's a tv show called sex education on netflix yeah and people were like oh is it from the show and i was like what and i'm like oh that and i watched that show and i was like oh whoops no it's not it's just <laughs> the uh the lack of comprehension <laughs> <laughs> exists in our country <laughs> also with the sex in the city drama that could be part of Oh, part yeah. of the theme. Yeah. That was definitely an education for sure. That's an education. Yeah, yeah. It's better than the Catholic school education. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we are live on Facebook. So, I mean, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Yes, welcome. Thank you for watching. <laughs> uh, welcome to this week's edition of Adult Spelling Bee. Uh, tonight, Kat Sakluna and I are really putting the adult in adult spelling bee uh, because this <laughs> evening's theme is sex education uh, or lack thereof, considering so many of us didn't have any comprehensive sex ed when we went to school um, or lackluster lessons that made everything even more confusing. Uh, I can remember in middle school, we had something called a question box where you were supposed to be <laughs> able to put anonymous questions in and they would answer them. And I remember someone putting in the question, why do you close your eyes when you kiss? And, <laughs> oh. I know. and, um, and someone in the class was like, so maybe the other person has a chance to run away. <laughs> wow. And then like the teacher talked about, you know, being your faces being so close together, it just makes sense to naturally close your eyes. Um, but I do remember I was, I was too embarrassed to have an actual question because after class people would always try to figure out who had asked certain things or try to find the questions and look at handwriting so i was super paranoid and <laughs> i'm not you know so i think one day i asked i was like why do our palms have lines on them because <laughs> it's class. i don't know it's like about the human body <laughs> our my health teacher she like pulled it out i could see it was like my piece of paper and she's like why do and then she's like oh, this is a stupid question and like <laughs> <it's> like <laughs> She's not even going to answer my question. No, that's rough. Uh, that's that's cold. Rough. That's She's so no. cold. Uh, but Kat, do you remember anything about your sex ed curriculum? Um, the first time we did sex ed, I think it was fifth grade, and you knew it was coming, right? You knew that. You knew that day was coming, and they took all the boys and put them in one room, and they took all the girls and they put them in another room. And I very specifically, it was a film strip. That's how old I am. And, <laughs> I had film and they, they literally, Ann Perkins said, the penis is like a soft, squishy sponge. And we were all like, because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that's what penis is look like. So then afterward, they brought all the boys back and all the girls back, and we just spent the whole day just side eyeing each other. <laughs> we don't know what they said about us, but what they said about them was gross enough. So we all just like were really fucking suspicious of each other for like the rest of the year. 
And then me and my friends really wanted to see if a penis was like a soft, squishy sponge. And some of them are on my Facebook. They're going to remember this shit. We all chipped in money. <laughs> we went to the bodega and we bought a Playgirl magazine so we could see penises. <laughs> that, that, it was that, an adult sauce. Everybody just started taking pages out. <laughs> and we all ran back to our respective apartments and we stuffed them in. I stuffed mine in my um, my Lionel Richie Hello album. <laughs> and then after dinner, I was waiting. I just needed to see that D. And I went to my Lionel Richie Hello album and it was the scariest thing I've seen in my life. And it's probably what turned me into a bisexual person. Like, I can't do that all the time. So, <laughs> oh my God, I can't believe we're literally not even 10 minutes in. It's like, this is like, <laughs> yeah, so that, that was mine. Like, but, yeah. <laughs> Something that, you know, I, uh, you know, Kat knows this about me, but I've been on top of, of sex education as a whole and, and been sort of disappointed with the progression of it in this country. Um, so I was looking up statistics because I'm always looking to see like what has progressed since the last time I looked it up. And unfortunately, the statistics are still pretty shitty. Uh, and I saw that only nine states currently require discussion of LGBTQ identities and relationships to be inclusive and affirming. Only nine states. Seven su southern states either prohibit sex educators from discussing or even answering questions about it. Um, or they require them to frame LGBTQ identities and relationships in a negative manner. Uh, so these kind of laws, they further stigmatize LGBTQ youth, uh, as, you know, as well as everyone else. And uh, this is why so many people are left without the information that they need for contraception, for, uh, you know, uh, STTs. Um, what did I say? I, I, STDs. STDs? STDs. Yeah, that's my sorority. SBT was my sorority. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, we heard it. We heard it a lot. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so I just, I, it's such an irritating thing because obviously it, it mushrooms into a lot of the political issues that affect everyone as adults and stuff. And it all starts with education, in my opinion, like a lot of it, it's just like, we're not being taught things. And, um, and it's sort of like tang tangentially, like leads to other stuff. Like you don't learn um, healthy relationships to, um, to help avoid like abusive relationships or how to extricate yourself from one once you're in one, because it does happen to a lot of us. Um, so yeah, so it should be taught in schools. It should be taught well, because even the schools that do um, mandate it. They, they don't, they, a lot of what I was reading is that they mandate it, but then they don't mandate how well or comprehensive it should be. So literally yeah. it could just be a health class where like my high school, where they give you a flower sack and they're like, you'll carry this around for a week and pretend to be a parent. Got it. <laughs> my, my favorite thing about Check. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that assignment was they were like, you have to take it with you everywhere. You have to do everything with it. Like, even when you go home, like, obviously, like, you're on the honor code, like, you know, carried around with you at home. Yeah. And I asked in class, I was like, what about gym class? Are we supposed to? And and they sort of got uncomfortable and were very much like, oh, yeah, you could just, like, put it in your locker. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and you're, like, giving us this whole thing. And then you're like, yeah, just, like, throw that shit in, my, in the locker and, like, let it suffocate. I <laughs> just... <laughs> you know where you put a baby <laughs> well, seniors yeah. can lock it in their car in, in the summer <laughs> you gotta crack the window open at least a little bit though. Yeah. <laughs> so, tonight you're not a monster to to fill some of these gaping holes in the education system this is this is our job tonight uh, these egregious gaps in our education. And so to do that, we have our amazing players, starting with Santina Muha, an actress and a comedian who is playing for United Spinal tonight. Hello. Hi. Hi. It, I, just, <laughs> I just wanted to touch on the sex ed stuff because, uh, you know, you don't, don't see it from the Zoom call, but I'm in a wheelchair I, and uh, I, to this day, have adults come up and ask me, how do you have sex? So there's no way that anybody was educating me as a child about that the teachers didn't even know, truthfully. Um, and I don't know the statistics, but 
uh, I think in New Jersey, at least, I think it's zero because uh, I, I never heard any sort of, I remember in college, they showed a porno of two people who were, were paralyzed having sex. And I wanted to crawl out of the room and into a bunker and never come out because it was just, people kept looking at me. I'm like, that's not me. I'm not. <laughs> Oh. The woman was like insane looking and I just was like, I have nothing to do with this. I, w I just wish they would have warned me. I'm like, you know, it's like they watched that one porno and everybody was like, oh, that's how you do it. And I'm like, no, I'm not that, it's not all me, you know? So we're behind on that too. Yes, you're exactly right. Um, <laughs> a few, few years back, I went to um, UC Berkeley and talked to one of their, um, they had a, a group that's like a sex positivity group. And a big thing that they touched on is uh, how sex and disability don't get talked about enough. And there were at least a handful of kids in that class who had disabilities. And I mean, there was, there was a lot of stuff that even I didn't know, but it was really cool to see at that level that they were talking about it and educating each other, like on a peer level too, besides mm -hmm. the, the teacher. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just one place. And that's also college. That's way too late. Like it should be yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, well. Oh. Well, that's a we're we're gonna fix this tonight like we're literally gonna fix this oh good <laughs> it's all over yeah <laughs> brandon brandon peters who is a podcaster who i did his podcast which is i think will be out tomorrow the first tomorrow one. yes so you should listen to that but we'll talk about that at the end of the show um brandon you're playing for second helpings and that's for um uh, is it poverty and hunger in central Indianapolis? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it, it helps to, obviously to feed people. But one of the cool things I like about it is that they also uh, educate unemployed people and whatnot on culinary arts stuff to help them get jobs in that field as well. So they're, and they're, they, you know, they have, they serve food, they collect food, they donate food, and they teach people, um, you know, culinary arts skills to help them land a job in a you know restaurant or something like that if they're out of work or needing that skill to, you know, help them somewhere. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's cool. I love that. Uh, Alejandra, speaking of culinary, we have our culinary expert, Alejandra here, who is a host chef TV personality. And uh, tonight you're playing uh, People's Fridge. Yes. Uh, yes, it's a People's Fridge Word Up, which is a nearby, I live in, um, right on the cusp between Harlem and Washington Heights in New York, and Word Up is a awesome little bookstore in the neighborhood that is a nonprofit store, so, and they do a lot of great things for the community, but one thing that they have going on right now is a community fridge, um, and it's just a really great program, so just, you know, raising funds to help keep it stocked and uh, keep it going. Love it, love it. And then we have a teacher, Chris Williams. We have a teacher and a storyteller, and you're playing for the Literacy Coalition of Oakland. Which yep, the OLC, Oakland Literacy Coalition right here. They just want people to read. They want kids to read. They want families to have access to resources to read and, and uh, doing the spelling bee, feel, it just feels so appropriate to play for them. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully I, I represent them well, very well run organization. Well, and we have two former winners tonight. Alejandra has won previously, and Chris, you've won previously. So, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't jinx me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, before we get started, here are the rules uh, for anyone who hasn't watched this before. Uh, Kat and I will each be giving you one word at a time. Uh, you may ask for a definition and a sample sentence, which we highly encourage uh, because we're going to try to make you laugh uh, along with helping you figure out how to spell the word. And each correctly spelled word gets you one point. No one will be eliminated in this round. Uh, Kat, are you ready? Let's do this thing. Okay. Are you all <laughs> ready to play? <laughs> Okay, that's this is a, that kind of thing that intro always makes more sense when we're live because then there's an audience who's like, yeah, like let's go. And now I'm like, oh wow, like <laughs> I hope. Oh. <laughs> you can insert crowd noise on the YouTube version. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, uh, Santina, you are up first, and your first word is withdrawal. 
It is a noun and it means pulling the penis out of the vagina before ejaculation in order to avoid pregnancy, also called pulling out or the pull out method or coitus interruptus. Uh, yeah, uh, do you wanna use it in a sentence? Uh, I sure would like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not about us wanting it it's about you <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah last, last week uh we were got off on a tangent or something and i was like anyway bringing it back to me now so <laughs> <laughs> okay it is 2021 and straight dudes are out here still thinking withdrawal is the safest form of birth control hmm yeah, it is also 2021, and I'm going through a little bit of withdrawal, considering that <laughs> has locked me up in my apartment for a while. Uh, okay, withdrawal, uh, W-I-T-H-D-R-A-W-L, withdrawal. So close. It's W-I-T-H-D-R-A-W-A-L. Oh, uh. <laughs> All right, it happens. All right, it's all right. This is the first one. Get it out the way. We got out the way. <laughs> and Kat and I have a little surprise for you all in round two to get some more points. So you'll see what we get. <laughs> you'll be all right. I hope we don't have to act it out or anything. Just you. <laughs> Just you. <laughs> and then we score that. Then <laughs> right. you are up, and Kat will give you your word. Mm -hmm. The word is consensual. Okay. I, I suppose I'll take a sentence. Sure. Just so you know, consensual is an adjective, existing or made by mutual approval. We'd likely have a lot less problems if schools had ever taught the meaning of consensual behavior. Okay. C-O-N-S-E-N-S-U-A-L. Consensual. Correct. I need to get my bell. I used to hit a bell when Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we need something. <laughs> yeah. Some sort of sound effect. <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so excited that I get to give this word to Alejandra. Oh, boy. <laughs> this one's awesome. <laughs> what shall it be? <laughs> Alejandra, your word is smegma. <laughs> It is a noun. It is the secretion of a sebaceous gland that collects between the glands, penis, and the foreskin, or around the clitoris and labia minora. Smegma. I'd love to hear a sentence. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, good. I'm so glad. Okay. So I'm I'm utilizing a meme. <laughs> Tired. Saying moist is your least favorite sounding word wired understanding that smegma completely eclipses moist <laughs> i was recently in a washington post article about the word moist hence why it's so appropriate <laughs> um smegma s-m-e-g-m-a smegma correct <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> okay chris you are up and cat will give you your word chris your word is zygote it's a noun it's a single cell organism that results from the joining of the egg and the sperm zygote may i please hear a sentence Absolutely. containing the word <laughs> i have always believed that zygote is the name of a character that hangs out at the star wars cantina <laughs> zygote Z Y G O T E Zygote. Correct. Nice work, everybody. Okay, Santina, we're back to you. Okay. <clears throat> Third is I it's so funny because I, I was when I was making a list, I'm like, oh, this is very much a cat kind of a word. I have to include this word. Uh the word is <laughs> Dijiac. It is a noun, a substance that increases sexual desire, sexual pleasure, or sexual behavior. Substances range from a variety of plants, spices, foods, and synthetic chemicals. Aphrodisiac. Yes, aphrodisiac. Would you like to use it in a sentence? 
Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, oysters, artichokes, spicy chili peppers may be on some list, but we all know the best aphrodisiac is a great sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I did have some artichokes today, so. <laughs> okay, let's try it. Aphrodisiac. Is it A P H R O? D E S I A C. Oh my God, you are so close. You are oh. again. One letter. Okay, the, which is like E instead of I? I said E instead of I, or I said I instead of E? You said E instead of I uh, for the first, the so it's A P H. After the D. Uh, D, yeah. Yeah, you had the second. Oh, I I yeah. Well, you know what? It's because I don't need one. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. I like that. When we did the uh, the live uh, stage show, the spelling bee, and Santina played after a certain word, she was like, "Oh, fuck this! I'm gonna go be a judge." <laughs> like, <laughs> bribed us somebody like just uh didn't know how to spell a word and just came over and like slid a 20 across the table <laughs> you, got, you gotta miss live shows just for that reason <laughs> very unpredictable uh brandon you're up and cat will give you your word okay your word is prophylactic it's a noun or adjective here it's a noun a medicine or course of action used to prevent disease Sentence while I think. Sure. <laughs> Every time I hear the word prophylactic, I immediately think of Jake Blues getting released from jail and the officer returning his personal item saying, one Timex digital watch, broken, one unused prophylactic, one soiled. Okay. <laughs> uh, P. R O P H O L A C T I C. It's not right. Super close though. <laughs> really? Yeah. You said O instead of Y. Okay. Why? Yeah. So it's for people uh, following along. It is P R O P H Y L A C T I C. But. It is a difficult word. And honestly, the words are getting more difficult. I'm very sorry, Alejandra. Good warning. So. <laughs> so your word is dysmenorrhea. It's a noun. It means painful menstruation, typically involving abdominal cramps. Although I love like that's Wait, no. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> the pain the pain is way more like they make it sound like oh it's just some abdominal cramps. No, it is way more painful yeah. than that. Like yeah, experience ability. Oh. <laughs> I mean yeah, it has been it has been a rhea at the end. I feel yeah. like that should be <laughs> a signal here. Yeah. There's a rhea involved. <laughs> It's got all the, it's like dis, met, like all men, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot mess of a word, uh, but I'd love to hear it in a sentence. <laughs> I have patiently tried to explain dysmenorrhea to my boyfriend, but he always seems to think I'm just saying diarrhea in French. Oh, <laughs> uh, now, now it'll be easy. There you go. It makes it sound there you go. easy. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> all right, that wasn't <laughs> French at all. Um, <laughs> oh my, I, the only accent, it's always like a vampire. Um, okay, dysmenorrhea, D-I-S-M-E-N. Um, should we go for another? I'm gonna go for another N. O 
R H E A? Is this Maria? No, you were closer than I would have this word. It's wait, what happened? Everything, <laughs> everything just happened. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so it's D Y S. Why? God damn it. What is wise? You should have stopped me from the beginning instead of letting me go. No. <laughs> You're done. Out. M E N O R R H E A. I knew there was a double something. Yeah. So it wasn't an N, it was an R. Double R. R. Yes. God damn it. R. R. I accept, I accept this. It's okay. This is not a good round for us. I'm scared of this next word. Oh, you, you should be. <laughs> Kat, we'll give it to you. Um, Danielle, I'm hoping I say it correctly. Oh, it's, um, it's, it's pronounced like, like try, if that helps. Yes, it does. Great. Thank you. This is already bad. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> okay. So your word, Chris, is priapism. Did I say it right, Danielle? Yes, that's right. Priapism. It's a noun. It is an unwanted and long-lasting erection. It's caused by way too much blood flow into the corpus cavernosa, often from medications. All right. This is like the, if it lasts four hours, you should call somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like it in a sentence? I would love it in a sentence. Okay, here we go. Every rom-com in the early aughts has the main female character truly embarrassing herself while the male protagonist endures priapism-esque situations to still reinforce how manly they are, even while in awkward situations. See, you added you added the priapism esque. I that I hope it's the same word. It is. <laughs> the esque is not needed in your stuff. You just Prio need to spell priapism. Priapism. Wow, this could go a lot of ways. Is um, P R. Y O P S I. P I S M, priopism. Sorry, <laughs> that's Danielle's no smile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I... that was a good try. It like yeah. slowly forms. It's like uh... <laughs> <laughs> last week they're making fun of me because they're like, you don't have a poker face when someone gets it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like we watch your face to make sure if we're like so now I'm like very conscious of trying not to do anything when somebody <laughs> I'm like mm. <laughs> do you still, like block <laughs> correct <laughs> so priapism is p-r-i-a-p-i-s-m so you were not I -A, all those wow. Y's instead of I screwed you up there at the it's, beginning. It, yeah, you're really like, oh, I know this one. I know this. Two in my head now. They, yep. they, 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 there's no, there's no getting this game, y'all. Yep. <laughs> we got our ones. Yeah, we are proving the the point about the oh. lack of sex education. Yes. So we yes. know nothing clearly. <laughs> right. I should have learned priapism in fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Changed my whole life. <laughs> Couldn't call anybody then. Yeah. Uh, okay, Santina, you are up. Okay. And your word is abstinence. Noun, a fact or practice of restraining oneself from indulging in sexual activity. Abstinence. Abstinence. Um, can you use it in a sentence? Sure. The way my high school taught sex ed was not ideal, but we did all spell abstinence correctly on the SATs that year. <laughs> Truth. Okay. Well, like I said, I'm from Jersey, so we didn't learn much about abstinence. But <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> abstinence. <laughs> um, it's uh, A B S abs. Uh, abs. Uh, a B S T 
D I N minutes or absolutes. I think it's A N C E. E N C E. No, it's E. <laughs> e N C E. All right. Well, listen. Now I'm on a roll. Just get. A, a <laughs> Why would I? Why would I change? You know what I mean. This is my thing now. You're abstaining from spelling correctly. <laughs> it would be wrong to get it right at this point. <laughs> okay, Brandon, you are up, and Kat will give you your word. And Kat, I'm so glad you get to read this one. Oh, I'm no. for it. I'm living. That means I doomsday. Whole, I have a whole case of whips up there. <laughs> <laughs> I love this word. <laughs> Okay, your word, Brandon, is submissive. Oh. It's a noun and an adjective. In this case, it's a noun. The participant in a BDSM sexual encounter or relationship who is obedient, giving power and control to another participant. Let's let's do the sentence. Let's I want to hear it. Let's do it. Sentence me. Sentence me. <laughs> Ted Cruz is currently Seth Rogen's submissive on Twitter. However, the Bernie Sanders mittens meme is currently my dom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> submissive. So S-U-B as in B under subbing sub. <laughs> M-I-S-S-I-A-V-E. Submissive. You sound disappointed. Wow. Way to bring us back, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Any anytime there's uh a, we've noticed words that have double consonants, the double consonants always throw people off because when you look at it, it makes sense, but in your head you're like, is it the M's or is it the S's or which you oh, know, like you question No question. <laughs> I was scared on the buildup to the word, and then it came. I was like, "Oh, whew. let's do this. Give me a sentence. Take your time." I was just more excited that, to talk about Bernie Sanders mittens for a second. <laughs> you can't. You can't not. Every time, every time it, you feel it's getting old, it comes back around. It comes. Someone figures it out, and it comes back around. I predicted he would be a part of every movie and television show by August of this year. <laughs> just wait. Just wait. Well, when you said the smegma sentence was based on a meme, I was like, dear God, please do not let it be the burden you want. <laughs> 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 not that meme. <laughs> Save Bernie. Save Bernie. Mm. Yes, we will not tarnish that perfect, beautiful meme. <laughs> Alejandra, your word is endometriosis. It is oh, a noun. I get all the fun stuff. <laughs> you are. All right. <laughs> A disorder in which tissue that normally lines the uterus grows outside the uterus. The tissue can be found on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, or the intestines. The most common symptoms are pain and menstrual irregularities. Um, did you know I had my period this week? Like, <laughs> <laughs> did you hack my app? <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, okay, so I will take a sentence. <laughs> okay. The most whimsical way I've seen endometrious pain described is when it was referred to as an accursed pelvic region. Got it. Okay. Endometriosis. E N D O M E T R I Oh, S I S. Yes. That was the oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm gonna be the face again, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And Chrissy will wrap up our first round uh, with Kat. Okay, your word, and again, hopefully, I'm saying it right is tocophobia. Did I say it correctly? Yes, as far as I know. <laughs> okay. I tried to look it up, but I just couldn't figure it out. I believe it's pronounced tocophobia. <laughs> it's a noun, and it can, eat, it can also be spelled with a C, just so you know. Oh. It's a fear of childbirth and or pregnancy. Tocophobia. 
Wow. Uh, can I hear in this sentence so I could learn more about this wonderful word? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I have suffered from acute tocophobia ever since my first viewing of the Miracle of Birth video in seventh grade, which they made us watch again in 10th grade because three years later, they still hadn't updated educational materials that were created in the 70s. Yikes. Um, tocophobia is maybe spelled T O C O. P H O B I A. Correct. Yes, I get it easy with that. Oh, actually, that that note was to you, Cat, about it. Oh crap! But it's in bold. I was, was going to spell it with this. I, I was going to spell it with a C anyway. I was I, 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 I definitely was already thinking C. Well, now you owe me one sexual favor for helping you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm in part of the game. Light of it, because tocophobia is like a real thing because of the way uh, maternal mortality rates are in this country, which is really horrific. Uh, which is something I didn't know. I was talking actually to my mom not that long ago because she had no idea. Because uh, I was telling, because like I know people who have spouses. Um, and relatives who passed away, like perfectly healthy, like in their thirties, like passed away, like having a baby and happens even more to women of color. Um, it, it's like, but it's, I feel like it's, it's so brushed under the rug and it's, there's so much stuff you don't know and stuff you have to advocate for yourself. Um, like something I learned from a relative of mine uh, going into labor is like, uh, she she had some issues and had to go back in a few days later and they tried to uh, put a catheter in her and apparently like in that situation you're supposed to like as much as you can not have one if you can still get to the bathroom because it um, more chance for infection besides like what else is going on with you in that case and it's just like all these things that you don't know like if it was me I would just been like oh yeah catheter okay like that's fine like <laughs> you're like that. doctor yes you do your thing <laughs> Yeah, no problem okay like I'm, I'm in your care like and so there's just all these like things that they don't you know and um I, I remember reading um with Serena right Serena had to advocate for herself yeah she had because of blood clots and and things that they like weren't paying close enough attention to and she had to be like oh hey like I've done my reading up on this and like you're not gonna let me die like in your hospital yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell everybody I do a lot of patient advocacy and I just tell everybody the most important thing to remember is you are your doctor's boss, not the other way around. Yes. You can, you know, fire them. You can ask to see one of their colleagues instead, like nurses as well. You have every right to be like, I, I, I would prefer to see someone else. You know, like mm -hmm. if you if you kept taking your car to a mechanic and he never figured out what was wrong with your car, you would change mechanics, right? But why don't we do that with doctors? Yeah. It's not anything wrong. See, That's if real. you were alive, people would be applauding and like standing over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there people that when they go to, they go to like have something amputated? Don't they like sometimes write on the on the one that's not supposed to be amputated? Yeah. Not this one. Have yeah. you heard of that? I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah. Wow. Somebody needs, like, a diabetic needs like part of their leg taken off. They will write on the on the leg that doesn't get taken off. Not this leg. Mm -hmm. Write that shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Well, I remember like when I was in, I was 13, my mom and I were in a car accident and I hurt my leg and she hurt her head. Mm -hmm. And when they brought us in for x-rays, they were x-raying uh, her leg. And even though her head was like literally like dripping and swollen wow. <laughs> and her leg was fine. And she's like, no, it's my head. And they're like, no, it says here, leg. <laughs> and my mom's like, yeah. Like she like looked like a Klingon, and then <laughs> they're like, "No, the paper says leg." So <laughs> it's it's so wild. No, Santine is totally right. Like uh, I uh, I didn't realize till college how lucky I was. Well, besides the fact that I had insurance, you know, growing up, but besides that, that I had good doctors. And then the first yeah. time you have a bad one or one that you have to leave, mm -hmm. uh, it's so shocking because it's just. You, this is your, this is, you have one job. Like, this is your job. <laughs> you had one job. Yeah. I've had doctors that I can say, truly say have saved my life. 
And I have also had doctors that I can truly say have almost killed me. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, for sure. So so you have to, and not everybody is the same. And like I said, I have a spinal cord injury from a car accident as well when I was little. So, you know, and they, they, doctors don't do much they don't learn about spinal cord injury. You know, it's it's maybe a part of a chapter in the book that they, so I literally have to teach them, oh, and, and don't go to the emergency room and if you don't know what you, you know, you have to basically come into the emergency room with the knowledge of what's going on because it's a whole, honestly, it's a TED talk and I don't even get me started. <laughs> when I was in my, when I had just turned 20, I had uh, some serious issues with my ovaries. Long story short, I no longer have ovaries. So I also don't suffer from that weird word that you had to spell, Alejandra. Alessandra. But um, anyway, so anytime after I would have to go get like a, an exam, whoever was doing the exam with the goo and whatnot, yeah. They would insist that I did have ovaries and they were just going to put the contraption in and look for them because I was wrong. And I'm like, I don't, I, I live in this, suitcase, <laughs> not you, this is my suitcase and I know what is inside of it and I don't have any ovaries in there. And I'm telling you how many times I would have to tell the person doing the exam because they just couldn't believe it because they're five and they just got their certificate to stick a contraption in your vajiji and they're right. So, yeah. <laughs> so it happens. Yeah, exactly. the, uh, my, my very first uh, trip to the OBGYN, um, my mom saw a, um, a male gynecologist and I, at like 17, 18, I was like, oh no, I am not going to see a guy. Like, forget that. And so I was like, I want to see a woman within the practice. And so she got, you know, um, the name of like one of the, the women that was in the group. And I went, this woman was the worst person like I've ever seen in my life and she made me cry like I went into the the waiting room where my mom was waiting for me and I was hysterical crying and my mom was like, what in the what happened to you and my mom went in there and screamed at this woman because she was like this was her first visit like how dare you like you know you like traumatize her like this she's never going to want to come back and you should you should be teaching them like that this is part of their their health care that they should be like coming every every year you think she's gonna want to come back here like after what you did and the thing was <laughs> i'll get a little graphic like um i was I, I was really nervous and um she kept telling me to relax like for the speculum and to and um it wasn't going in and uh, and the more she was like yelling at me to relax, the more I like couldn't relax. And she was, she was just very like abrupt and rude. And then, um, finally, cause I was like, I'm, I'm trying to relax, but you're like, you're making me nervous. And, uh, at a certain point she literally like threw the speculum down and she's like, well, if you're not going to relax, I can't, I can't do this. I can't examine you. And I just started bawling cause I was like, oh my God. Like, and I didn't really have a reason to, to go just yet. Um, but I was going to go to like leave for college and, and, uh, my mom's doctor had been like, oh, it's just a good thing to just go. And she can ask questions and whatever. My, Cause my mom was like, oh, she'll ask me. And her doctor was like, no, no, no. She needs to be able to <laughs> ask someone, not you. And, and when she was right. And so after that, she was like, so do you want to see my doctor now? And I was like, okay. And he ended up being the greatest doctor in my life. And like you said, Santina, he is, I credit him as one of the people who saved my life uh on on a certain occasion um and he was always there for me he um uh, would let you email him uh if you called and left a message he would call you back like um and like whenever and he he knew I was like a nervous person because he'd been my mom's doctor for so many years and she's a nervous person and mm -hmm. he, he said to me once he goes you're tougher than your mom but you still he's like it's not your fault she like just passed it on down to you like the, the stress and the anxiety <laughs> and I was like I know and he's like but you're definitely tougher than she is <laughs> 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 and he was I was so sad when he retired and I had to find a new gynecologist because like oh man like finding a new one uh but yeah that's but Santina you're exactly right um it is it runs both ends of the spectrum you have doctors that you can't get away from fast enough and you have ones that really just you know I would recommend to the ends of the earth and be like you must go see this person because they they actually care about you and, and listen to you and, and answer questions. And, you know, um, and I want to feel like if they aren't sure of something, they're going to confer with someone more knowledgeable and, and either like get you to that person or, you know, work together with that person or, you know, whatever it is, but, um, okay. Yeah. I'm rambling and we should get to, <laughs> to round two, <laughs> which I one word correctly 
it was all worth it to be here to just <laughs> make sure I sp spread the word. You are your doctor's boss, okay? Just <laughs> leave with that. I and love just that. record, I did know how to spell many of the words that I was not given. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just for anyone following along. <laughs> it's a long quarantine. I've smoked a lot of weed this year. So, so <laughs> round two. <laughs> Round two, we're going to uh, do something a little special for tonight because tonight's about education and, uh, and telling stories and whatnot. So round two is usually uh, our fastest finger round where Kat and I will take turns calling out a word and you will ring in by raising your hand and whoever, you know, rings in first gets to spell it. If you get it right, uh, you get three points. Uh, if you get it wrong, you lose a point. If uh, you get it wrong and someone steals it, they'll get six points if they get it right. However, an additional thing that we're doing is, uh, because in round two, we don't do uh, definitions or sentences. However, if you would like to explain what your word is, we will give you an additional five points. Ooh. Oh, so, oh wow. Yeah. Like if you get the explanation right, or if you just explain it? period. So, uh, well, yeah, you have to get the explanation right. <laughs> <laughs> explanation. <laughs> what if Could have had some fun with that. What if you get the explanation right, but not the spelling? Then you'll get the five points for the explanation, but you won't get the three points oh, okay. for getting the word right. Okay. okay. So you'll get, you'll lose. Whoa. Yeah. So you, so there's like lots of opportunities for points here. Okay. You, so, if you explain wrong, do you get docked points? No, you will not get docked points because we're, you will only get docked points if you get the word spelled wrong. That's okay. it. Yeah. Got it. So I had, to, I had to like go over this in my head numerous times today to make sure it made sense. Cause I, <laughs> like, what questions are they going to ask? They're going to ask this. And then also, um, so if someone gets the explanation wrong, but you want to steal the explanation, you can steal the explanation and still get six points for that. So, oh. yeah. Cool. So there's, yeah. So there's two, two shots at stealing basically. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's All right. It's, it's, Bring it's it. wild. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, uh, most of, you know, round two is sometimes it's one word. Sometimes it's a phrase. Sometimes it's two or three words. Uh, so I'll try to give you heads up going into it. The, uh, first word of round two, although it sounds like three words, it's actually two words and it is human papillomavirus. Chris. Uh, human papilloma virus, also known as HPV. H-U-M-A-N mm -hmm. uh, space. Uh, P-A-P-I-L-L-O-M-A-V-I-R-U-S. Yes. Very good. And would you like to tell us what HPV is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can pass, I know I can pass, right? Like, I feel like I don't have to do this. If I don't know. Know. Would you like to <laughs> steal the explanation? <laughs> as far as I know, it's an STI that um, can, is, can be present in both male or female, but it presents symptoms, I think, in females um and it leads to cancer it can lead to cancer and it's spreadable uh you know through sexually transmitted infection i think they just switched it to infection right yes all right <laughs> santina is on the board you did it nice Woo! great <laughs> ST, my sorority all the, the ST <laughs> really came through for me <laughs> yes yeah, so just uh, a little more uh background on that because I do a lot of advocacy for cervical cancer uh, awareness in January which we're in right now is cervical cancer awareness month uh, but yes HPV is a viral infection that's passed between people through skin to skin contact there are over a hundred varieties more than 40 of which are passed through sexual contact and can affect your genitals mouth or throat and like Santina said uh, it affects men and women however it presents in women and men likely it will never show up and they're more carriers of it, uh, which is why both should get the Gardasil vaccine so we can eradicate it like they did down in Australia. Uh, so that's my soapbox for that. 
And uh, next, our second word, round two. Kat, go ahead. The next word is toxic shock syndrome. Santina. Toxic shock syndrome, T-O. Oh, wait, do you want to use it in a sentence? No, you want me to use it. Okay, T-O-X-I-C space S-H-O-C-K space S-Y-N-D-R-O-M-E. Correct. And it happens when you have a tampon in for too long or it, take it out before it's ready and some of the fibers gets, you know, stuck in your vagina, I think is, is how you get TSS. The, or if you fall asleep with it in, or it's a tampon transmitted thing. Yes, this is correct. Yeah, TSS, uh, it's a sudden potentially fatal condition caused by the release of toxins from an overgrowth of staph bacteria, most commonly from leaving a tampon in too long, mm -hmm. um, which I tweeted about it the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I was, so about this. I was like, I really don't forgive the teen magazines that made me think we were all going to die of this. Like, I mean, <laughs> super common and that we were all going to die of TSS. And, um, and then later, when you're older, you find out that it's super rare. <laughs> but I used to yell at my friends, like in college, I had one friend who would uh, talk about, you know, uh, wearing tampons overnight. And I'm like, you're going to get TSS and die. Like, I read about it in YM magazine. <laughs> I am. Young and modern. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so good job, Santina. Um, this is your round. <laughs> this is your round. Okay, uh, next word is um, colposcopy. I'll stay quiet. Will it go away? <laughs> Trust me, when uh, I had colposcopy, I felt that way. <laughs> I was like, if I don't know how to pronounce it, we ignore it. <laughs> Chris, go ahead. Uh, can I hear it one more time? Just so sure. I can hear it. Colposcopy. Colposcopy. Um, C O L P O. S. C O P Y. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so I'm assuming. What is it? I don't know. I'll pass on that one too. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone know what a colposcopy is? Anthony? No? Okay. So a colposcopy is a procedure uh, to closely examine your cervix, vagina, vulva for signs of disease. Um, it's most often used if your pap smear has come back irregular. It's sort of like the next step. And then often um, a biopsy is done while you get your colposcopy, um, which when I had mine, there were medical students there and they were like, dyeing my cervix and looking at things and uh it, it was very not fun <laughs> also they had told you um that you only needed to get undressed from the waist down um because it wasn't like a regular exam but not thinking because i think it was like february when i went i'm wearing this heavy sweater and so i didn't think it was going to take that long so i'm just like dying and sweating like from the waist <laughs> down. Like, and the, the doctor's going, so do you see here? So we die here. And then we do, and the student's like, oh, yes, yes. And they're asking questions. I'm like, okay, can we like speed this up? Because <laughs> I understand. I'm, I'm glad, you know, doctors of tomorrow, Doogie Housers are here, but still, <laughs> <laughs> this is not comfortable. <laughs> like, why don't you just take a picture and you can all discuss it afterwards? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Those not for nothing, guests. if we haven't, oh, not for nothing, if we haven't learned anything else, being a woman is hard, and I thank you for doing what you do, and being who you are. Thank you for your thank service. You. Just thank you, thank you for your service, thank you. <laughs> not, much, not much else we can do here. It comes, with, it comes with a lot of hard to spell words, wild explanations, fear mongering. I appreciate you guys. Um, yeah, it's a, the, actually at the end of round two, what we really need to do is talk about uh, the worst uh, sex talks we've gotten because I always tell people how before I went to college, my dad 
uh, his talk to me was he like wanted to uh, take me for a ride to Bed Bath and Beyond for like the nine thousandth time for egg crates or whatever. And um, my mom's like, "Oh, I'm not gonna go on this trip." And I'm like, "Okay." And, like she's being all weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> he had said like he wanted to just do like a one on one because it like was like important to him to do that yeah. and so we he, he like doesn't say anything on the way and I'm but I'm now like stressed because I'm like what's gonna happen I don't know <laughs> <laughs> we're on the way back and we're literally almost back like we've gone the whole way there and the whole way back and he's like so uh, I need to talk to you about school and I'm like okay and he goes uh you just um uh you, you gotta you gotta be careful and I didn't, I thought he was talking about drinking. So I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. You know, if I put a drink down, I don't pick it back up or I don't take one from someone who I don't know. And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, well, well that, yeah, that. But, uh, uh, and then there's just silence for a really long time. And finally it just all comes out in a rush and he goes, um, uh, herpes is forever and AIDS will kill you. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> Can we have that on a shirt? Herpes is forever and AIDS will kill you. <laughs> and it's all, it's like not even like factually correct. Like, <laughs> and but the thing was, you could tell he was like so proud he got it out. Like and he <laughs> to say, and he's like, I'm just like, I did it, I did it. Like I had the dog, and I'm like, no, no, didn't quite. <laughs> quick get me the information yeah i got my main points <laughs> well on, oh. on that note uh cat why don't you give us our next word i love this word and you should too the word is fellatio alejandra <laughs> no i regret it as soon as i <laughs> <laughs> Shall I tell you what it is? <laughs> well, fellatio is a sexual act of when a penis <laughs> is pleasured with the mouth. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> you need a penis and a mouth. <laughs> Gotta come together. <laughs> Done. Very Done. good. It's Italian. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Palacio. Palacio. Yeah, it's a beautiful man's name. Beautiful, beautiful man's beautiful. name. Palacio. Um, I was going to go with just cock sucking, <laughs> but I felt like this is more about education. <laughs> it depends on where you grew up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember fellatio was one of the words in the Valentine's Day one we did live. It was. And I don't remember who it was, but I remember they spelled it B L O J O B. <laughs> Please tell me they got the point. <laughs> I like we gave them the points, yes. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We were like, this not, I'm just throwing that spelling out there in case. Um, <laughs> um, but I will spell this or go for, oh God, F-E-L-L-A-T-I-O? Correct. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, double consonants, you know? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. The next word is actually three words. It is polycystic ovary syndrome. Vantina. A uh, polycystic, P O L Y C Y S T I C. O ovary, O V A R Y system, S Y S T E M. Oh, it's, it's syndrome. Oh, syndrome, S I uh, Y N D R O M E. Correct. Yay. <laughs> and I don't know what uh, polycystic <laughs> is. It is it. Um, when you're uh, the presence of cysts on your ovaries, uh, not non cancerous cysts, yes, uh, actually, yeah, damn, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, for anyone who doesn't know, because I actually didn't know that much about it until not that long ago. Um, it's caused by a hormone imbalance uh, where the ovaries release too much androgen uh, and common symptoms include a missed or irregular periods, benign ovarian cysts, uh, infertility, acne, excessive hair growth, and weight gain. Um, but the cysts are usually the main um, issue and uh, the most, I think, the, the one that gets treated because a lot of the other symptoms are not that much they can do about them. Um, okay, so next, Kat, you're up. Gonorrhea. Chris, <laughs> <laughs> I think you had that by a hair. <laughs> uh, gonorrhea, all, back to the Rias. Um, G O N O. R R H E A, gonorrhea. Close, close. Oh, what did I miss? Uh, Brandon, do you want to steal? Is it G H O N O R R H E A? No. Nope. Someone want to steal? I was so really close. No. I'll try. <laughs> I love when there's like one word that stumps everybody. <laughs> G. <laughs> I think we got the G part right. Oh, see, I, I kind of liked your H after the G, but Danielle did that thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know the tell. I know. There's I, an well, H, isn't. Huh. I felt like I wanted that. I wanted to go with the H also, but then Danielle was like, no. so. I, I, I went there for you. Now you don't have to. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to just uh, stick with an O after the G. Um, Jojo has joined me. Um, G O N N O R H E A. No, that was bad. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I, I took some weird turns. <laughs> I think this is, I'm going to try. Go for it. I think I'm going, and my, I think this is what Chris said, but in case he didn't, this is my try. G O N O R R H E A. That's correct. Oh, that's what he said. I right? think that's what I said. Oh, I thought you only said one R. I definitely said two R's. I've been practicing for oh, weeks. Oh, my bad. You know what? I must have been <laughs> the whole, on the whole honoria thing. My friends have been really working with me on this. <laughs> my, Chris, my apologies. I am adding, taking away your subtracted point and giving you your points back. Do we reverse it all back in time to his? Yeah, and I don't think spell anyone should get a, no one should get a missed point here. Like Superman <laughs> flying backwards. So, yes. <laughs> Totally clean slate. Now, uh, Chris, now that we're back to you, do you want to say what gonorrhea is? Well, I know for sure it's an STD, uh, but in terms of uh, the differences between all of them, I can't tell you. Um, well, I'll give you points because uh, literally it's listed as a sexually transmitted bacterial infection. Huh, there you go. There you go. I got lucky on this one, y'all. Thank you, Santina. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Santina, you should get like half the points for <laughs> back in the right direction. I could have sworn you two R's and I thought maybe you just, I thought that might have been what happened, but yeah. That's I why you saw my face. I'm like, wait, it has to be, there's no yeah. way it's not yeah. two R's. It, it must no, I'm still, I still think that H goes after the G. <laughs> <laughs> I still feel strongly about that. It's Gahanaria. 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 Maybe, maybe Gahanaria. it's like, the German way of spelling it or something. Hey, it, if, if he would have been correct the first time, I wouldn't have embarrassed myself with that H after the G. I'm like, wait, is there something? I think maybe there's a trick there. I think I've seen it maybe like that. <laughs> Look what you did. The Canadian spelling. Ruined us all. Spelling. <laughs> okay, this next one, I did not know was a thing. So <laughs> we're all learning today. And the words... <laughs> Two words. Okay, I know Kat just saw what it is. Okay. The words are retrograde ejaculation. Brandon, you were first. 
retrograde ejaculation. R E T R O G R A D E retrograde and ejaculation E J A C U L A T I O N. Correct. And do you know what it is? Is it like if it goes like it's held back and it goes back in retrograde? I I don't study this. I've not had it. <laughs> so it just sounded like it was an easy word to spell, and I was up with that. So, so does does anyone know what it is? Is it? Wait, I feel like I read about. Is it like it gets clogged and it goes? Yeah, it goes. It goes. It goes, goes backwards. It goes up. Yeah, it like goes. It backs up on the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. It's Tra- like traffic jam. <laughs> Yeah, it's like when you have to, you know, like, sorry, you can't go this way. When there's a, there's like a, it's like the trash, the trash truck is blocking the road. So you have to, all the cars have to slow to go back. We are not yeah. exiting the tunnel today. <laughs> otherwise, the, otherwise the Uber is going to be like $300 because you're never going to get off. It's that, right? It's sur- it is a surge of a type. But yeah. <laughs> oh my God, God. <laughs> Wait, is any of that is any of that right? Actually, yes, actually. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait, are we just riffing here? Because I have no idea what this is. It is uh, when ejaculate goes into the bladder, up into the bladder instead of out backward. the urethra. Um, oh, and so that's, that's backward. It's almost like, uh, like a, uh, what they call it uh, a dry orgasm. So like the person can still have orgasm, but the semen went the wrong way. Oh, I thought that was with pants on with both people, but okay. Does it hurt? <laughs> it, it doesn't, they weren't really that clear about the pants. Who are you asking? That was my first question. It's like, <laughs> anyone, anyone watching, if you've had retrograde... I don't know, and I'm not going to try it out. So, Let us know. people at home, you had it. People Karen. at home, tell us. Color. <laughs> doctors like i was trying to get a gynecologist to stop by to like weigh in on this shit and like and no one got back to me so or you or a um like a, a urologist yeah, yeah. A urologist yeah any urologist out there please let us know we're very curious it sounds painful it sounds yeah yeah, yeah. so we're it's the first we're, time i've heard something here tonight and i'm like ooh. Yeah. <laughs> really gonorrhea didn't do that for you <laughs> <laughs> gonorrhea is okay that's a couple of itches but, uh, this is, this yeah. is eternal <laughs> this is ejaculate that is bad no that. you don't know <laughs> um, we have time i mean we started out for uh two more oh. words in this round and uh so i'm i'm gonna do the next word and then cat you can pick the last one of this round so okay i'm, I'm been dying to do this word. Um, I'm not sure if we did this in the live one or not. Um, in the because we did like a, a dirty words Valentine's Day one, which Alejandro was there for. But I love this word so much. The word is frotage. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Alejandro, go ahead. <laughs> I do remember you saying this word. I don't remember what it is, although I'm happy to riff. Um, (laughs) I'm going to go with spelling F-R-O-T-A-G-E. Is that? No, God damn it. No. All right. Well, then I'm going to come. I'm going to try to figure out what it is. Okay. Um, (laughs) I love that. I'm here for this. I love that. I'm here for this. Does it involve semen? frothy mix of semen i see where you're going here i see what you're doing here you know what I, you see what i'm thinking like here? a fresh you're thinking like a, exactly like a like a semen prep hay oh my God. <laughs> like oh. that um that dalgona coffee thing that was going at the beginning of quarantine that was the, with the froth do you remember that? <laughs> so it's a topping of sorts. It's like a semen-based Algona coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my That's God. what 
I'm submitting. <laughs> I'm glad you don't lose points for that. <laughs> That's worth a point in itself. That's worth a point. <laughs> Can you repeat That's my final answer? <laughs> Uh, no, that is not correct. <laughs> Does someone want to spell frotage? Bro can you repeat the word? I'm I'm not hearing. Frotage. Okay, frotage. Hangs out with Felacio. Frotage <laughs> <laughs> and Felacio, best of friends. It's a Tom Stoppard play. Um, yeah. okay. <laughs> Ooh, have we stumped everybody? Fro. Is is it a P? Does it start with a P? Uh, is it a P-H? Yeah, letter, yeah. does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> is there a silent H? <laughs> How close was Alejandra? Just... Very close. Very, very, huh? very close. Very close. Very close. Brandon, you want to try? F-R-F-R-O-T-A-G-G-E. Nope. Nope, I saw the... No. No. Nope. Is it two T's? <laughs> what, what could be happening in this word? I want to, I don't want to spell this word because I don't want to lose a point. You know, we are, we are doing the thing, but I feel like there's like an A with a double thing above it. Ooh, Do you Ooh, call that? Ooh, yeah, I feel like it's that, but I, I don't know. I, I have no, I can't even think of this word. I didn't realize there could potentially be diacritics involved. Uh, there are no diacritics involved, I promise. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good, it was a fine theory. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know this one. No? Okay. Well, frottage is spelled F-R-O-T-T-A-G-E. And frottage is literally dry humping. Oh. oh my god. Oh, that's the opposite of what I was thinking. <laughs> it's like it looks like frottage. I, I was thinking moist. <laughs> and it's so funny because one of the first definitions I found it, it it was a it was literally like a paragraph and it was like when uh one human being uh positions oneself up against another human being while both human beings are clothed and and like it kept going on and I'm like are they just trying to say dry? <laughs> like, <they're> not <laughs> it's not a technical term. I'm like, you don't need four sentences like to, to say, it. and it was like all proper, like oneself against another closed oneself. <laughs> <laughs> it was so strange. And then I finally found a page that's like dry humping. It's frotage is dry humping. Wow. On one partner, there lies a layer of fabric. On the other partner, there lies another layer of fabric. When the two come together, and rub with the friction, <laughs> the frotage begins its experience. <laughs> now, if a hole gets cut in one of them, that's a whole nother thing. It's a different, it's a different, it's a different thing. <laughs> it's a, different, it's a religious thing, I think. Different yeah. word. Religious okay. thing. Kat, uh, go ahead and give the last word of round two. I have picked the word I like. I love this word, and you should too. Cunnilingus. <laughs> Chris, that was very study cool. man. Very... Uh, been studying. Uh, C U N N I L I N G U S. Conilingus. Correct. Okay. And do you happen to know what that is? Um, I think it's Felatio's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Once. At least once removed. <laughs> and that is my answer. <laughs> 10 points for that one. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Uh, I am going to count up points to see which two of you are going to the final round. And while I do that, uh, Brandon, why don't you tell the sex robot story? Oh, okay. So. Danielle and I recently were talking about stuff related to this. Um, and I brought up how when I was in school, we would go to this place called the Macmillan Health Center. So as, as if a way to kind of take the edge off teachers from teaching us these things in elementary school. Uh, um, I grew up in a small Midwestern school and they this place was all about health and stuff. And I shared it because we we're talking about the miracle of birth video, which 
I watched in like a movie theater room, not like the AV cart rolled in and they put the old thing. This was on a big screen in a theater room where they would show us this thing. So gigantic fun. But the main attraction there was this robot called Tam. And her that stands for Transparent Anatomical Mannequin. <laughs> and she would come up from like the floor, like, and like older kids, older kids would warn you about this trip. And like, yeah, it's real freaky. There's this Tam and she comes up and she's clear. And she's like, hello, I am Tam. Now let's learn about, and then it would light up and be like, this is my uterus, my uterus. And it would just light up there. These are my breasts. My breasts are you, and it would turn around. And the funny thing is, there was no Tom. It was only Tam. We didn't learn. <laughs> they skipped the male frontal area and stuff. And it was only Tam. And she was down there in like the center. And you had to go like every year. It was like, oh, it's Tam year. We're going to McMillan. They add they add one new thing to your health learning, and you do everything else the same. And you visit Tam, and she gives the same presentation like every year. It was like three, four years in a row. And she's just like, mm, and you're just kind of just kind of weirded out. And out in the lobby thing, they have like a kind of like demo Tam <laughs> or something. And it's just, it was, it was whack. And like, I thought like everybody, that's everybody had a McMillan. Everybody saw something crazy like that. But Dale was like, what is that? I was like, it's a robot, Tam. Yeah, the, the, Her lady parts light up. The traditional light up sex robot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry if I disappointed you thought I had sex with a robot. That has not happened in my life. Uh, but yeah, we did have Tam. Wow. That's like opposite bop it. For, for <laughs> yeah. Like it lights up and you can't do anything except accept the information no, that's coming. You don't go like touch it for more information. You don't touch it. You're no, in a, no, no, you're no. In a, you're in an auditorium and you're just like, she's going to pop up from the floor. <laughs> And someone come out and be like, hi, kids, blah, blah, blah. Who's ready to learn about? They didn't really rile us up for it, but, you know, there's a speaker. They showed a video. Oh they showed oh a video. And it had the kind of feeling like when you go to like Epcot and they have like the science stuff. Like it was like that kind of, you know, we haven't updated since the 70s, of course, type thing. But yeah, it was. It was and you, you just know, uh, like teachers for these kinds of, um, you know, presentations and stuff, you know, they're all patting themselves on the back, like, oh, haha, we're so creative, thinking out. We're like smoking that. outside. <laughs> you're like, eh, damn. <laughs> yeah, you know, that doesn't work. <laughs> Katie Johnson's going to be pregnant in junior year. <laughs> she ain't going to listen to Tam. You just know it. You know, I mean, that's what they're going to do. Yes, at my school, I, I, I from what I remember, because um, again, Santina can say too, it was Jersey, like they didn't give a shit about us. And they, uh, they used to, I think, combine driver's ed with health uh, in, mm -hmm. like from sophomore year on. And so it was a gym teacher who would have to teach like one unit of health. And then the rest, you could see they were so relieved to be like, okay, and today we're going to talk about, you know, hydroplaning. And <laughs> hydroplaning. <laughs> well, I went to Catholic school, so our sex ed was part of the religion class and yep. was taught by Father Jolie, who, who was a very lovely, enthusiastic Jesuit blind priest um, who had an assistant who would, you know, where it was like his eyes in the class. And the assistant was this like really enthusiastic, like 26 year old who'd like gone down a bad path, but loved Jesus now. And his name was uh, Justin Fatika, but we called him Mr. F. Um, and he was also really hot. So all the girls <laughs> loved him. <laughs> and then like Mr. F was like Father Jolie's eyes in the class. And so he would make sure that we did our homework and he would like look at our, like we had a journal we used to have to write in. And like the whole thing was that they wouldn't read our journal but they needed to see that we filled the pages out. Uh, and I think we were just supposed to write about our feelings and our emotions. And we just learned a lot of great things about like the Catholic views on sex, um, which are great, really oh, great. great. <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> thorough and accurate. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say 
in New Jersey defense, defense because we have been giving it a, a beating as usual. They <laughs> did, and I just read an article recently that they did just pass um, mandatory LGBTQ plus sex education in the in schools. That's mandatory. I think they're the first state to, to do that. Good. So, you know, Jersey, I wonder if I it applies to the cat because my Catholic school was in Jersey. Uh, Pram is Catholic. Good. <laughs> but I don't know. They also fired, they recently fired a friend of mine who became a teacher there because they found out she was married to a woman. Uh, so this is, yeah. Oof, that's so messed up. <clears throat> I know, I know. And this was like, this was like, it was like about two years ago. But yeah, so who, I don't know what what is happening. But Oof. yeah. And it was like all like, basically like all the alumni, like all the kids, like years and like decades of kids like signed a petition and, and all this stuff, but yeah, but it's yeah. See, Catholic I, school, man. <laughs> see a point, and then we took it away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's Catholic. I mean, you know, Catholic. It's the, yeah, it's the Catholic. It's the Catholic schools have different rules, so yeah, they, they surely do. Yeah, that's did you? So, Chris, uh, what kind of class, if any, did you have? What did they terrify you? What did they do to you? So I went to Catholic school for twelve years. Uh, eight in Harlem and four in the village at an all boys high school. And uh, our religion class was taught by a sister. Um, <laughs> I don't remember her name, but for now we're just gonna call her Sister Sledge. She's white though. Um, <laughs> and then we had, you know, we had the gym teachers and the Jesuit brothers who would come in and be like guest speakers. But our religion class in our health class was mostly centered around the Bible and around abstinence. Yeah. And then us smart ass boys just like just questioning everything to the point where they would get frustrated and give us busy work so they didn't have to teach us. <laughs> so it was it was kind of a cupcake class. I don't know if you've heard that term, but just like an ECA. because um, they didn't really they weren't really doing much with it. Uh, and we didn't really want that. <laughs> so my sex my sex education came uh, much later on and in in life experience rather than in the classroom. That's, I, I feel like I, I took a biology of human sexuality class in college, um, which I learned a lot more stuff. Um, but I recently found one of my old notebooks from that class and was like, wow, they actually wrote oh, no. some stuff back then. <laughs> but also, again, like we were saying before, it's, it's too late. Like you gotta, you know, like we need to know stuff earlier on. Um, and then also it's obviously a lot of it's so, uh, uh, fear-based and um, like set in old puritanical values and stuff. Whereas it's proven time and time again, if you just give us the information, we will make our decisions based upon information. But if you keep us from getting information, we're, we're going to make decisions based on our lack of information. So mm -hmm. like, what's better? No, you know, knowing things and, and making uh, a fully informed decision. I, I don't know. Not to get on my soapbox again <laughs> for the second time tonight, because um, we're supposed to be having fun and you know fun and educational. Um, so uh, to that note, our our top two players tonight going to the final round are Santina and Chris. So yay! And uh, yeah, Santina, nice comeback in round two. <laughs> So Santina gets to go first in this round, and um, Chris, I'm just going to ask that you, uh, before you go, but I, I'll ask you to lower your volume, and then we'll wait mm -hmm. for you to come back, but before you do, we'll go over the rules real quick. Um, so, because Santina, I don't know if you've ever played lightning round before. Um, so lightning round, uh, Kat and I will take turns. Um, I'll, I'll do your word, Santina and Kat, you can do, uh, Chris's. I almost said, I almost said, Jason, you can do Chris's. Cause I'm like looking at <laughs> being in the corner. <laughs> Hi Jason. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, um, spell as many words correctly as you can in one minute's time. Uh, if something sounds like a homonym, just spell it in the way that you think I mean. And as long as it's spelled correctly in one form, like the word blue, for example, like if you spell it B-L-U-E, but it was meant to be B-L-E-W, you're still going to get a point because there's no possible way you could know that. Um, and you can pass twice. 
So, um, okay, Chris, I will ask you to lower your volume. I'm going to mute and lower my volume. Okay. And then so, um, I'll just wave like this when it's time for you to come back. Cool. Good luck. Oh, thank right. you. <laughs> Fantina. Um, Kat, will you put a minute on your phone? Yeah. And um, okay, so Kat's going to count down a minute on her phone, uh, but she won't start it till after I give you your first word, Fantina. Okay. 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 All right, Kat, you ready? Mm -hmm. Fantina, you ready? Mm hmm Okay, here we go. Hour. H-O-U-R. First. F-I-R-S-T. Time. T-I-M-E. Together. T-O-G-E-T-H-E-R. And. A-N-D. I'm. I apostrophe M. Feeling. F-E-E-L-I-N-G. Kinda. K-I-N-D-A. Horny. H-O-R-N-Y. <laughs> Conventional. C-O-N-V-E-N-T-I-O-N-A-L. Methods. M-E-T-H-O-D. Of. O-F. Making. M-A-K-I-N-G. Love. L-O-V-E. Kinda. K-I-N-D-A. Bore. E-O-R-E. Me. M-E. I. I. Wanna. W-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Knock. K-N-O-C-K. Time. <laughs> I can see when you figured out what it was. <laughs> so for everyone else, uh, our first time together and I'm feeling kind of horny, conventional methods of making love kind of bore me. I want to knock your rock off, get my rocks off, blow your socks off. Uh, because Kat and I were trying to figure out what to do for a lightning round. And uh, a funny thing we talked about is how, because sex ed was so lacking, sometimes we look to songs of the time to teach us something. <laughs> and what better than Ellen Cool J? Yeah, and, and, and uh, I want to plug, for no reason, only because I love them, but Salt and Peppa had a, a movie on LM on Lifetime last night that it's, I, it's on my DVR. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm very excited. And I did get some sex education from those girls. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah, we, were, we were debating that song too. It was just, this one like had a lot more uh, uh, words, whereas um, that one was a little bit harder uh, to figure out as you went along and also um, more repetitive refrain. So we try to make it like a little bit uh, like, wait, what are we spelling? What are we spelling? And that this one was like sort of like a slow burn. Um, yeah. But okay, good job. And uh, Chris, yay! <laughs> Santina, I DVR'd that too. I can't <laughs> wait to watch it. Oh, yes. I was all about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Chris, welcome back. And uh, you know, once again, you can pass twice. You get a point for every word that you spell correctly. Um, I will be timing it. And uh, as soon as Kat gives you your first word, I will start the timer. Oh. <clears throat> All right, Kat and Chris, whenever you're ready. Chris, you ready? Yes. Baby. B-A-B-Y. I. 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 Wanna. W-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Hit. H-I-T. It. I-T. In. I-N. V. T-H-E. Worst. W-O-R-S-T. Way. W-A-Y. Make. M-A-K-E. It. I-T. Hot. H-O-T. Scheming. Uh, S-C-H-E-M. I N. Um, on. O N. V. T H E. Ass. A S S. <laughs> Since. S I N C E. V. T H E. First. F I R S T. Day. D A Y. Don't. D O N apostrophe T. S T O P. Damn. D A N N. I mean, I was like looking at the words. <laughs> <laughs> the word. Just repeated the word twice. <laughs> Good job. So, how long did it take you to figure it out what it was, Chris? <laughs> uh, 
Um, I, I it's like it's familiar, but I still can't place it for some reason. <laughs> okay, Kat, go ahead. Do you want to? Uh, what song is this? <laughs> Baby, I want to hit it in the worst way. Make it hot. Scheming on the ass since the first day. Don't stop. Damn, I love it when you talk like that. Make it bounce, sugar. Long as you can bounce me back. <laughs> oh, is this LL Cool J? <laughs> 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 Santina was spelling out uh, the earlier part of the song, the uh, our first time together, <laughs> and feeling kind of horny. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> okay, ladies love Cool J. <laughs> All right, I'm going to add up the scores now. And um, actually, why don't you all go around? Was there any movie when you were younger that you felt taught you something? about sex that was like way more cool. like yeah comprehensive than what happened in school brandon why don't you start because you look like you had something to say not comprehensive or anything but uh the first time i heard the term blowjob was in the film night of the demons uh which is a <laughs> horror movie from the 80s and linnea quigley uh says it out of her mouth and i'm like what is that <laughs> and, like i was a kid i was like because she's in a she's in a, a convenience store like she's uh, it's like Halloween and she's in this pink dress. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but she's bent over and you can see her underpants and she's wagging her butt while her friend steals stuff out of the convenience store. And uh, these two guys at the counter are just like, oh, and, and when they go to leave, she says, uh, like, I, I don't even think anybody would or consider giving you guys some blowjob or blowjob or something like that. And I was like the hell is i was like that's sexual <laughs> sexual like who would want who would want that <laughs> and then i had to like figure it out i was like oh okay but yeah it was night of the demons that's where i first heard that term i i feel like my parents um were very uncomfortable a lot of the time because certain things would always pop up and i'd be like what's that and then they'd have to find a way to try to explain it because uh one thing was we passed a church that was called Immaculate Conception. I'm like, what's Immaculate Conception? And they were like, uh, it's, it's well, complicated. It's how you were born. <laughs> and, and that reminds me of the first time I said jerk off and my parents were like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I'm allowed to say jerk. You said I was allowed to say jerk like last week uh. and off isn't bad. So I don't get it. And they were like, uh, <laughs> they back themselves in a corner. Mm -hmm. oh, they should have just let me say it. That's like I I told my parents a joke in fourth grade, so I got ahead of the curb on the fifth grade learning. Mm. So I, I I told them a joke that I thought I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Um, the joke was there's two kids who were in the back of a car. They had names, one boy name, one girl name, and they said, "Hey, can I stick my finger in your belly button?" And the girl said, hey, that's not my belly button. He said, hey, that's not my finger e either. And my parents are like, oh. And like the next week, I'm watching a video they're sitting me down for hosted by Vanessa Williams <laughs> about sex and stuff. Vanessa Williams? Vanessa Williams. And in the video, she encourages and says that she is saving herself for marriage. Oh. So... You know her brother's name if, is Chris Williams, and he also oh, does abstinence videos. No, oh man! Well, if, if that's if that's true, then what was Rick Fox the guy? Her, is that her, who she was saving her, herself her for? Was Rick Fox NBA All Star, Hall of Fame champion Rick Fox? Like that's that's a high pedestal so, to then hold on went, to. Well done, Rick. But yeah, she hosted this video and I got to learn about, I got a head start. And then they were like, do you have any questions after it? I was like, absolutely not. No, <laughs> no, so not telling you guys any more jokes, <laughs> <laughs> but that happened to me. Yeah. Well, I think I can't think of any movie, but I feel like love line was definitely like the place to learn mm -hmm. and learn way like way more from love line than i ever did from father jolie or <laughs> or or mr mr f <laughs> chris were there any tv shows or movies or anything you know i was a tgif kid so everything was like through the lens of like the television family but i will say that i had some uncles who would tape over my vhs tapes and i would love to tape nick games I'm still a, a Knicks fan, unfortunately. 
Um, and there were two specific instances where he used my VHSs to tape things. One of them being in, like a straight up Playboy porno. And the other one being this movie that I actually really like called Ricochet. It has Denzel Washington and John Lithgow in it. And there's like a really intense sex scene in there. And I watched both of those like when I was eight <laughs> by myself <laughs> thinking I'm watching my Knicks game. Um, so I learned a lot from those Swish. specific movies. Well, I made out with the New York Nick while we're on the subject of you did. Nice. <laughs> one one worth sharing about or yeah. I won't say who, but I will say he has a shoe line. <gasps> oh, oh, oh. Oh my god. Oh wow. Good times. Good times. Good information wow. tonight. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's um <laughs> did did you all see Adventures in Babysitting? Oh yeah. Yep. So there's a part in Adventures in Babysitting um, where when they go to the restaurant and she sees her boyfriends there with the other girl and uh, and um, the kid she's babysitting for like, you know, stands up for her as per usual. And he's like, I could only dream to have a girl like Chris and like you have her and you're messing up, blah, blah, blah. And Bradley Whitford is like, uh, uh, hey, little boy, her legs are locked together at the knee. And um, I'm watching with my parents and I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? He just didn't answer me. He <laughs> just like, oh. like, you have it too. You have it too. That's all you need to know. <laughs> I'm like, and then the funny thing was because like, I, I could tell it was like an insult of some sort, but I didn't know what. Mm -hmm. And I was at school, like I was at middle school and someone was talking about something um, after school and, and they were, you know, mean girl talk or whatever and um i you know wanted to contribute and i'm like her legs are locked together at the knee. <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea what it meant <laughs> wow i honestly i thought it meant like she had knobby knees or information is important <laughs> i did a similar parroting thing once when my mom was we were at the grocery store and her purse fell and everything fell out. And she was, that had happened to Elaine on Seinfeld. And she was telling my, my dad back at home, like, oh, my purse fell today. And I just parroted what I heard. I said, and her diaphragm went flying out. You know, it didn't, I don't you know, I, but that happened to Seinfeld. I thought that's what, I thought that's, it was in a purse. I, I didn't know. It was such a. Wow. And I thought a diaphragm. I, was, I think we had learned about diagrams in school and dioramas. And so that's what I was picturing. I didn't know. As you see on my diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> there was something about sex in the city that bothered me. Like Carrie Bradshaw was so behind the times. Like she didn't have a cell phone forever, and then she was like still using a diaphragm. And I'm like, <laughs> like get get a shot, get a pill, like get an IUD. What's the matter with you? Like. I feel like they use diaphragms on a lot. Like like a, a Rachel on Friends had a diaphragm, I think. Or yeah, I literally have no idea what a diaphragm, how it goes in. Is it, I don't know, is it that circle thing? I don't even know. It's like, yeah, it's a C. Yeah, it's like a circle. Do you feel it when it's in there? Like, I don't like the idea of like, putting something in there. It's just like floating around. Well, I think like, it's, I feel like it's, it's similar. Like I use, like I use menstrual cups and wow, it's like all about my period this week. Um, but, it is, but it's like the same concept. I don't know what that is either. I have no clue. Yeah, it's like a circle and then it's got a film, like a little, so it looks like a little, like a little bowl, but made out of like latex okay. and then. And you put it in the, in the vagina. And then yeah, you kind of squeeze it in, and then it like locks into place. So then it's just like a little barrier. So oh. then, <laughs> so then this is no. So I get my point. It's the <laughs> retrograde, retrograde ejaculation. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. I, would, would, would you rather get that, Brandon? <laughs> and then you can use a contraceptive sponge with it, which is like the spermicide in the sponge, and then the Gotta sponge. Be sponge worthy. You use them together. <laughs> exactly. Gotta yeah. be sponge worthy. Gotta be sponge worthy. Yeah. Speaking of which, I definitely need to do a Seinfeld spelling bee at some point. <laughs> <laughs> well, never having had a period, really, except for when I was in my teens, all I had to ever worry about was, like, STDs and shit. I didn't have to worry about getting pregnant. 
So it was like, just strap, strap one of those rubbers on there and we're good. I don't need yeah. to put a little cup inside my vagina. I'm good. Yeah. Oh. Put your dick in there. That's all you need <laughs> my vagina. It makes a difference. Is, it's like an umbrella versus a raincoat, I feel like, right? <laughs> It's like instead of it's like oh it's above. <laughs> I guess I'm the penis and in this demo. <laughs> You're creating some just amazing visuals right now. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. I love that this is your interpretation of a penis. That's fantastic. Come <laughs> <laughs> oh. <Go> on in. <laughs> no fritage here. Oh my god. Oh. A word that we didn't get to in round two um, is a word that I always remembered from health class when they did like uh, that whole like what Brandon was talking about before when they did more of like the bio uh, biology of things and we're like oh like here's a diagram of like where things are and like what they do and for some reason I always remember vast deference like on the male one like oh yeah vast yeah. yeah. deference and um uh <laughs> it was for some reason it became like you know because when you're a middle school it's like joking around and, and being inappropriate like because we're embarrassed and uh, about this stuff and uh someone <laughs> would say in class like I was like I have to go to the nurse and I remember some kid being like does your vast deference hurt and I, <laughs> I don't think about that to this day like, <laughs> does your vast just wrong just all kinds of wrong <laughs> it sounds like a fake name you'd use when you're making a reservation at a restaurant that, yo my name is Vast. <laughs> Party of four. What's the name? I'm not gonna. That's I'm not gonna spell that for you. I'm just gonna let you do that. <laughs> we'll let you sit with it for a minute. <laughs> so uh, we do have a winner for tonight, and actually, it's a tie between Chris and Santina. Yay! Which I do. I do have a tiebreaker, but um because tonight's show is important i'm just going to donate to both your organizations because they're both yay and that's great do that. um and uh i realize i've i've kept you all longer tonight than usual but i've been having so much fun i'm sorry <laughs> to keep <laughs> going out and make so much longer um but before we say good night um let's all tell everyone where they can find our stuff and find us online if you so wish to be found and all that good cool stuff uh brandon why don't we start with you and your podcast all right well if you want to follow me on twitter and instagram uh it's at brandon 4k uhd which is like the the discs or the high definition 4k stream and then my podcast is The Brandon Peters Show. Uh, you can find it at thebrandonpetersshow.com, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you can find podcasts except SoundCloud. No SoundCloud. Uh, my show's a little odd, uh, well, different than most of your podcasts because mine runs all through the week. So it's not just, you know, once and then every two weeks I have episodes that drop Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it goes across podcast streams and YouTube. But tomorrow... Danielle is my guest and we talk about her and then we talk about the movie Working Girl because that's kind of the concept of my Monday episodes. I have a guest, we talk about them, then we talk about uh, a favorite film or odd favorite film of theirs. And then like on Tuesday, I, I talk about some uh, new Blu-ray and 4K uh, releases and stuff and show them on my uh, YouTube page. Wednesday, I got a thing called Old Space Show, which is episode by episode uh, traveling through an old science fiction show. It's currently Space 1999. Thursday, you can watch Danielle and I from the Monday episode in an uncut fashion on YouTube. And then Friday, her and I talk about the music video for Madonna's Like a Virgin. So that's kind of how oh. it plays out. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, and you can go to my I have a YouTube page where I do the video promos, which we were talking about, I think, off air earlier um, for that. But a lot of content there. But Brand the Brandon Peters show. So just type my name and it comes up. So <laughs> and we'll find you. And Alejandra, mm -hmm. who is one of my favorite Instagram accounts of all time. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. My Instagram is always Alejandra, all one word. Um, and that is also my name on Twitter, I think. Yeah, that's my name everywhere. Um, I just have one. And then <laughs> wherever butts are sold. Um, and then <laughs> And then you can watch me if you'd like to watch me on a few places. So I, I'm, I host cooking classes and live cooking videos and classes for Food Network um, on their Food Network Kitchen app. 
Uh, and I always, I like promote those on my, my Instagram when those are. So I do about one a week or so. Um, and then I also am on to today show pretty regularly. I'll be on Friday uh, during the eight o'clock hour with uh, mail order Valentine's Day ideas. And then the following week I will be doing book club, Valentine's Day book club ideas. So um, you can watch that if you wake up early in the morning. Um, and then what else do I do? Oh, and then I host for amazon.com's like QVC-ish type show. It's called Amazon Live. And so if you go to amazon.com slash live, it's a daily morning show that's, um, I do food, but everything's like based on products. So it's like product deal. So here's a Vitamix, but also I teach you like a recipe you can make in Vitamix and stuff like that. So all over the place, but obviously I promote everything on my social. Uh, yeah, this has been great. This has been super fun. And my Instagram is mostly outfits. And <laughs> I, like I talk about food, but it's mostly outfits. <laughs> legitimately never going to forget. Uh, so it's more like an umbrella instead of a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> I like want like an umbrella like I want it that to be a costume now <laughs> and I think Chris you you wrote down in the chat something else that Alejandra said earlier that was really funny what did I say it's, it's a hot mess of a word but I would love to hear it in a <laughs> that was great Hello. And Chris how about you I know you've done uh some storytelling on the moth and you do great work uh in Oakland so tell us where people can find you yeah, I'm just a regular ass person. Um, I work at a high school uh, and I've always worked with kids and I just do a lot of fun stuff on the side that interests me like spelling and storytelling specifically. So I've told some stories uh, uh, with the moth I used to produce for them uh, the year before. You can find my stuff on YouTube. And um, I have a private IG, but you can probably find me if you, if you look hard enough. But uh, I also have a, a, a pet project podcast called we in here uh you can find us uh on spotify and anchor um and other places where you can get podcasts uh we in here pod on instagram and uh yeah just want to continue promoting healthy lifestyles education and making sure that people stay positive and test negative you know what i'm saying yeah stay positive test negative i love that love it and santina where can everyone find you and yeah, watch you, you. obviously there's on on Instagram and uh, Twitter at Santina Muha, S-A-N-T-I-N-A-M-U-H-A. And um, I have a show that is on hiatus right now, but it's coming back called Rolling With My Homies. Uh, it started as a stage show at UCB, but you know, in COVID times has, is now, any, just like Spelling Bee, now you can watch it from anywhere. Um, and I interview another person who uses a wheelchair or has some physical disability and but it's like a fun comedic, you know, it's, it's not a depressing show, but just to show people that everybody with a disability isn't the same exact person, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's oh. that, and that's been really fun. I'm also working on a book right now, a collection of essays, sort of like a shrill or, you know, um, a David Sedaris like, collection of essays uh, that I'm working on and I'm writing a few films. It's just a lot of writing going on right now because what can, you know, it's something I can do from home. And um yeah, so if you follow, same as everyone, follow my social and, you know, you can keep up on whatever, whatever I'm on, whatever shit I'm on. And you, you just stressing me out that week. You recently hosted something with Amy Kohler, right? Uh, yeah, that was really cool. If you have any interest in this thing I did with Amy Poehler, it was a, a workshop or a, um, what do you call it? We know where it was similar to this, where we had a, fun, a bunch of really great panelists and we talked about this comedy and disability and how it's never really represented well in comedy, how it's usually, you know, any movie about disability ends up with a suicide and an Oscar nomination for the able-bodied actor portraying that. Mm. I mean, you know, it's always so bleh, dramatic. And I grew up as a person in a wheelchair thinking, why is my life not sad? Am I doing something wrong? <laughs> am I supposed to be sadder than I am? So, you know, uh, but then, you know, growing up, talking to other people in wheelchairs, realizing, no, it is funny. Well, a lot of funny things happen. Why isn't anybody showing that? And a lot of it has to do with because there's nobody with disabilities behind the camera either. And then, you know, authentically, you can't write those experiences if you don't have them. And it's a whole issue that I've been spending most of my life and career trying to correct and normalize. And, you know, and if I get rich and famous doing it well that's fine too okay 
<laughs> that's just a bonus. But yeah, just trying to normalize disability and let, you know, calm people down because you cannot be more upset about the thing that, than me. You can't. <laughs> My thing. <laughs> I fully support everything you just said. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, you're right. Uh, a lot of disability, it's usually an able-bodied person playing the part. And then, um, like you said, it's a drama and ends in uh, some sort of like, honorable like ending uh, uh quote unquote i should yeah. say horrible like ending their life or uh yeah. you know sometimes worse it's the inspiration form where they like learn to walk again oh. or, you know and yeah um and there isn't there's there's so many more authentic stories to be told and like you said people need to be behind the camera in the writer's rooms and you know writing yeah. the stories and producing the stories so that's that's what needs to happen um, so yes, I do hope you get rich and famous. <laughs> <laughs> I can say You're she was on spelling bee when. <laughs> yes, well, no, I'll still be doing it, I'm sure. <laughs> and then Luciano, and he loves you all. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and Kat, where can everybody find you? Or if they want to uh, follow when you, um, you know, watch your Rachel Ray. <laughs> <laughs> well, I keep my Rachel Ray harassments just to my Facebook. I forgot we started with that. If if you um, <laughs> if you want to watch me verbally abuse her once a week on usually Saturday mornings when I'm tipped off my ass, uh, you can just find me on Facebook. It's not Jason Booth, like the screen says. It's Kat Shakluna on Facebook. Um, warning, warning! If you're the one asking to be my friend, that's on you. I'm not responsible for this. <laughs> <laughs> um. I try not to, to put any Rachel Ray stuff anywhere else just because I want to keep it private. But on Twitter and Instagram, I'm Miss Kitty in New York City, Miss Kitty in NYC. I usually use Twitter to harass politicians. And then I use my Instagram for food. And uh, yeah, and for some reason, like for the last four years, I haven't really been very creative. I've just kind of felt like weighed down by something. And in November, like I had this like rebirth of hope. So I'm back to writing, which is exciting. And I'm working on my one woman show called We Are the Six, which is about my experiences on the fucking green line of which I have many, <laughs> as Danielle knows. And yeah, that's pretty much on the sixth train. I messaged Pat and I'm like, guess what happened on the sixth train? Everything, <laughs> everything happens on the sixth train. <laughs> But yeah, so that's really much, pretty much all I'm doing. I'm still working for SNL. That's been going good. And I'm glad I got to be part of this for I have a room dedicated to sex in my house. So thank you for letting me be part of it. <laughs> thank you for being part of it. Uh, <laughs> usually uh, if people are here and watching, they most often know where to find me, but I am on Twitter at LSEP, E-L-L-E-S-E-P, uh, where it's mainly stream of consciousness thought, which I apologize for in advance uh, if you don't already follow me. Uh, Instagram is Danielle Sup. It's really just pictures of my dog and flyers with spelling bee. Those are really my two flyers things. I, right now. Um, I did write a book uh, about losing my virginity since we're talking about sex education tonight and it is available at Barnes and Noble and Amazon. It came out quite a while ago. Uh, but certain things are starting to happen with it now, which are very exciting, Ooh. which I can't talk about just yet. But um, if you want to buy it and read it, it's called Losing It, the semi-scandalous story of an ex-virgin. Um, and it's very funny and it's a very quick read. Um, and it has a lot of ridiculousness that happened to me in my early 20s. Um, but also, I know we, we, we took a big steaming dump on sex ed and <laughs> how bad it is in this country. However, there are some sites I do want to point out that do a really good job of giving info to teens and adults alike. Um, there's Advocates for Youth, there's American Sexual Health Association, there's Amaze.org, there's Scarletteen. Um, I did some videos in the past year for Roche Diagnostics about cervical cancer awareness um, and cervical cancer awareness survivor.org, which is C-E-R-V-I-V-O-R.org. Um, is a great community. And I also did another video for uh, ASCP patient champions about the importance of preventive care. So you can check those videos out if you just Google me and uh, they come up. Uh, and yeah, I guess that's it. And we're taking off next week and possibly two weeks because I feel like 
people aren't going to watch a spelling bee when the Super Bowl is happening. So I will get back to you about that. But I do know on Valentine's Day, it's going to be sad box is going to be the theme. Oh. Ooh. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone here for playing and hanging out for as long as we did tonight. I had so much fun with all of you. You're all <laughs> And um, everyone listen to the podcast. Uh, watch Santina's shows and give her money and <laughs> give Alejandra a, a book and a TV show <laughs> and all that good stuff and yes we'll see you all back here uh, next time good night everyone bye bye America and later later <laughs> <God>. <laughs>